Tonight on The Struggle. Is quiet quitting a euphemism for lazy bones? An ode to the former leader of the free world? And off the back of an exclusive interview with the new member for Kuyong, Dr. Monique Ryan, we preview this spring's latest bestseller. Fans of Formula One driver Daniel Ricciardo are still coming to terms with the news that the grinning West Australian won't be at McLaren in 2023. With spaces for drivers on the F1 grid limited, there is a strong possibility Ricciardo may not have a drive at any team next year, prompting speculation about a potential career move. Well, staying in the fast lane, let's check in on our alpha male, Max Payne, who's also into a bit of speedy travel. Thanks, Ren. Folks, NASA's trying to get to the moon again. Seems they got tired of conspiracy theorists saying the first one didn't happen. And it makes sense. Earth is done, dusted, worn turf. It's time to penetrate the vast unknown. With vulnerability and complete candor, I have to say that this last delay in NASA's launch of Artemis 1 is a damn good thing. After all, what man with a rocket isn't expected to delay the delivery of his load? Huh? The Artemis 1 is the largest rocket ever built. Some would say it's intimidating how large it is. It's really large. Trust me, trust me, it's so big. Huge, some might say. When asked about his rocket troubles, NASA's head administrator said it was complicated. Yeah, we've all been there before. I've been there, done that. Take a little blue pill, mate. You'll be fine. Or you can take my new masculinity tablets, guaranteed to make you feel the pain. Anyway, it's a shame NASA is so cautious these days. I prefer the way SpaceX does it. Now compared to Artemis, Elon's rocket may look a little chode-like, but there's nothing wrong with that. Smaller rockets work just fine, damn it! The best rocket of all, of course, belongs to Bezos. Look at that. Perfect girth, perfect height, perfectly clean-shaven. All men are jealous of the blue origin, just not its blue ball bearings. Sadly, NASA is still having problems with their rocket making Artemis yet another dude who can't get it up. But Artemis is a woman. Come say that to my face. I will fight you. Intriguing stuff, Max. Uh, well, now let's peek over the fence and see what's happening in Karen Kvetch's neck of the woods. This week, I am enraged by the quiet quitting phenomenon. In case you are unaware of what I am referring to, quiet quitting is Gen Z's latest trend that glorifies being a burden on society. Or as they would say it, being a burden on society? Oh, the pathetic phenomenon, if you can even call it that, was first brought to my attention this week when my niece Clementine was over at my abode again. <laughs> Anywho, she described quiet quitting as doing what you're paid for and working your scheduled hours without sparing a thought for the children and boats of upper level middle management. I swear Gen Z think that their presence is a present. I would say a more accurate definition of quiet quitting is sipping boba tea and getting paid to make TikToks on Facebook at the expense of people like me, those in charge. How are we expected to make our money without your unpaid labour? But I do know one thing for sure. Quiet quitting is unacceptable. If we have a neighbourhood watch meeting at 9am, you must be there at 7 a.m. Gen Z thinks that they're so special that they cannot be exploited, but the joke is on them. I exploit absolutely everyone. <laughs> Luckily, Clementine does have a trust fund to help her out, but not all of you are so lucky. I'd remember that. Typical of you Gen Zers to act like you're above us on your platform shoes 
How about you stop learning about communism and start learning about nepotism? It's the only way to succeed in our glorious meritocracy. I am absolutely outraged at Jen Lazy and their quiet quitting. Their behaviour is truly unacceptable and I will not tolerate it. Karen Kvetch there, who's made it her lifelong goal to quit being quiet. Anyway, let's strap in for a bit of a spin as we head over to our mindset coach. Congratulations, Victoria. A big W for you last week. As you must have heard, nursing and midwife aspirants are no longer required to pay large sums of cold hard cash to get fatigued and anxious in universities and work long hours because Daddy Tan has decided to do this for them. Pay the cold hard cash, that is. You still get the fatigue and anxiety that goes with studying the degree though, which is so empowering. And if you're excited about that $9,000 being given to you to pay off your study, I need you all to stay calm and sit down because there's more. Just burn yourself out for two more years in the philanthropic public health sector and you'll receive an additional $7,500. Now, if you're in doubt whether or not the $16,500 is worth being tired every single day for the rest of your life, trust me, or trust me not, it is. Let me make it make sense to you. If you decide to jump on this initiative and you save thousands of dollars, now what can you do with all that money? Afford therapy right after work. Feeding the money back into the health system, a circular economy. So student nurses and midwives-to-be, no more sleepless nights during your finances. Just stock your fridge with Red Bulls and your Insta feed with Starbucks every single day. And welcome that new life in this world, being caffeinated as fudge. Go grab that application form before the business majors find out about it. And now, for the quote of the day. Being tired at work is normal. Oh, and fatigue is a myth. It's mind over matter, friends. So if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. It's all about the mindset. Thanks, Phoebe. Well, we're off to a quick break. Welcome back. With Labor grabbing media headlines for reaching the milestone of 100 days in office and ScoMo commanding all attention before that, the Liberals are navigating the challenge of remaining in the public view. So we've invited Leader of the Opposition, Peter Dutton, on tonight to share some of the limelight. Welcome, Mr Dutton. Firstly, what do you have to say to all those cruel comments likening you to he who must not be named? That, that's, that's fine. Uh, I'm not, not opposed to that. What's one major issue you'd like to draw our viewers' attention to? The debate at the moment is about how do we firm up. I thought the Max Payne segment was over. Oh, <laughs> and why is that an issue? What we've seen over the course of the last couple of weeks uh, is the fact that, you know, this is a problem of uh, at night time. Um, yes, well, that's not quite where I thought this interview was going to go, but all right. Uh, have you tried Viagra? You know, we'll continue to do that. Right. Uh, is this something you should really be discussing in the public arena? I just think have an honest, reasonable, unemotional debate about it. Well, thank you, Peter Dutton. Well, speaking of being reasonable and unemotional, let's cross to someone who knows the definition of neither. Apathetic Ashley. Word on the street, and by street, I mean Smith Street, Collingwood, is that Labor is planning to give tax cuts to people earning between $45,000 and $200,000. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know where I stand on this issue. Like, my local MP, my landlord, my orthodontist, and my drug deal, I mean, <laughs> pharmacist, all seem really excited about it. But then some people are like, Ashley, there's a cost of living crisis, health and education systems are in collapse, and it's gonna cost $243 billion over 10 years, none of which is gonna benefit anyone on lowest income. So it's been really hard to weigh up what the morally correct stance on this is. 
Compassion fatigue is so real. And I'm like so iron deficient from my semi full-time vegan diet. <laughs> Come to think of it, I'm so hungry. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> You know, in reflection, it feels kind of hypocritical for a prime minister who talks a lot about growing up in public housing. <laughs> I mean, I would have thought we could expect a much more genuine commitment to social justice. Like, you talk so much about how you care about this one thing, and then you do something that directly contradicts that. <laughs> I suppose not everyone can be morally perfect. It's a good thing I am. In solidarity with the under 45,000 earners, <laughs> whoever they are, I'm launching my brand new social media initiative. Hashtag don't be dirty, cut 30. To commemorate the creation of the new 30% tax bracket, I'll also be cutting my social media content by 30%. Instead of posting 10 second videos, I'll be posting seven seconds. And instead of uploading photos, I'll be uploading them, but with 30% less. Artistic towel vibes. What will I cut? That's for me to know, and you to find out. Okay, let me see. No, no, do it again, do it again. Like this, do you reckon? Like this? Yeah. I know you may miss me, but don't worry, I'm only doing it for 30% of the time. It's what a real, genuine believer in social justice would do. And if you're a genuine believer in social justice, follow me on all socials at Inner North Ashley. Always a force for good, Ashley. <laughs> right, time to change gears a bit and embrace the kinkier aspects of life with Dommy Tricks. Oh, well, hello, Ren. Thank you for the introduction. I am Dominatrix, a full-time leather enthusiast, and I'm here today to introduce you to a book like no other, Fifty Shades of Teal. It's thrilling. The main characters are all alpha females giving pseudo-alpha males a run for their money, and if I may say, dominating the political landscape like a real dominatrix. Rawr. In the latest chapter, entitled The Recent 2022 Federal Election, teal independents like Dr. Monique Ryan took on men like incumbent Josh Frydenberg. She looped up that electorate so hard, Joshy flew off the pedestal quicker than he could come up with a safe word. Now, while the chapter did excite me, this next one really gets me going. It's called Victorian State Election 2022. The survey shows these femme fatales have an army of subs in the seats of Caulfield, Q, Sandringham, Hawthorne, Brighton, and in my special bondage seat, of course. And now the more progressive men are getting on board, with former Bayside Mayor Clark Martin announcing this week he'll stand as a deal for Sandringham. Mmm, delicious. Now, it's a known fact that the major parties only want a two-party system, which uh, is a bit vanilla for my liking. I say, bring on the thirds. Now, we all know that inside the Canberra bubble, orgies, threesomes, and the occasional tickle play are abundant, especially in the prayer room. And yet, they insist on a binary relationship with voters? Huh? Don't they realize Australia now is a nation of voters that swing? Um, I'll give 50 shades of teal four squid. Uh, I mean, four stars. Until next time. <laughs> Steamy stuff. Well, now it's time to assess the health of the nation. We are very fortunate tonight to have with her first one-on-one -on -one interview, the new member for Kuyong, Dr. Monique Ryan. Dr. Ryan, thank you so much for making time for us. I understand you've just come out of surgery? Yes, I have, Ren. Sorry, I haven't had a chance to put my lippy on yet. Oh, that looks a bit messy. Um, are you able to maybe tell us a bit about the, the patient? Yes, of course, Ren. So the patient's name is Democracy. Oh, oh, 
God, I know her. <gasps> mm. Yes, we all do, Ren. Sorry if this is the first time you've heard of it, but she did have a bit of an accident. She's going to be all right, though. What, what, what happened? Not certain for sure, but her injuries were consistent with being taken out by a bulldozer. Oh, my God. What? Brutal, I know. Oh. Truly just horrible. Well, what damage has that bulldozer inflicted on democracy? Well, to be specific, she was experiencing a critical increase in the accumulation of personal power, which was putting pressure on the heart and lungs that helped to pump her all around the nation. In the unhealthy state she was in, no one knew who was doing what. Now, Ren, I did manage to dig out the really, really nasty bits from democracy. Secret commissions in Treasury. Home affairs. Health, finance resources and, and a few other little nasties. Oh my gosh, will she, will she live? I mean, I think we've got it all, but if left unattended, this could turn into Trump syndrome, which is characterised by constant misinformation, really bad hair and the skin turning orange. Ew. Uh, what's that bit? Oh, this here, Ren? This is the appendix also known as the Governor-General. Everyone knows it doesn't do much, but when it does, watch out because it's always messy and everyone wants it out. It might just need to be removed from democracy altogether, which is a rather difficult operation. Oh, between you and I, Ren, that is one of the worst cases of Trump syndrome I have ever s seen. Oh, that did look pretty bad. Do you think democracy will make a full recovery? Put your mask on. Ren, I will do everything in my power to ensure she does, because if we lose democracy, we lose the ability to say Peter Dutton looks like a potato, and that is worth fighting for. So I stitched her up before someone else could. Thank you, Dr. Monique Ryan. Put your mask on. Uh, okay. Uh, well, now let's see what Scamantha has on offer today. Thanks, Ren. Do you want to be a millionaire in a fortnight? Wondering how 12-year-olds are richer than you are? Well, Australians have been urged to take opportunities in NFTs more seriously as trading is experiencing a huge downfall. So obviously, now's the perfect time to enter the market. While we know you've heard of NFTs, we're also aware that you've got no clue where to start. And to be honest, neither do we. But do not fret, get your step-by-step -step resourceful guide to launch your NFT startup. Here's a sneak peek. Create your own unique NFT based on whatever you like. Can't choose? Why not opt for one of our novel NFTs, new fashion trends. Anthony Albanese in leather boots, Peter Dutton in overalls, or Pauline Hansen in her favorite outfit. Who said creativity can't earn you money? Find more NFT ideas and read your way into success for just $31.99. Dupe a friend to buying with you and get $5 off your total purchase. We are not responsible for any defamation, PTSD, bankruptcy, financial hardship, insomnia, newfound phobia, nightmares, fear, the inevitable collapse of capitalism, or long-lasting emotional damage. Back to you, Ren. What a deal. Anyway, we're off to a quick break. <laughs> Welcome back. Now let's head over to Bindi Prickle, our resident wildlife expert direct from Straya Zoo. Bindi, I believe you've just had a new arrival recently. Yes, we have a really special visitor all the way from America, the Shack Moose. Oh wow, that's so exciting, a moose? It is. It's pointless, but it's exciting. Okay, well why did you bring the Shack to the Straya Zoo? No reason, we just thought it'd be fun. Their stature is so grand and they seem so nice that you just become mesmerized by their mere presence. They really bring people together. Okay, well is Australia a natural environment for the shack? Nope. Are there plans to introduce them to Australia? Nope. Okay, well does the shack have a job here? Kind of, if you consider being a gambling ambassador a job. Oh, so they have political experience? Nope. Is there any real purpose to their visit? I mean, do they have any significance to the Australian Indigenous community? Nope. Okay, well, is their visit meaningless then? I don't know, it seems. <laughs> Ren, 
It's the Shack Moose. They are a friendly, uncontroversial animal, they're cool and sporty, and they really appeal to the youth of Australia. Do they? I'm Gen Z and I can't say I know that much or care that much about the Shack. Oh, oh, oh. Did, did you say a Shack Moose? <laughs> uh, well, Bindi, what can you tell us about this how, animal? How do you not know about the Shack Moose? Um, I the Shack don't. Moose was voted the most valuable animal for three years. And in 2005, it won the BET award, the best ecosystem thing. And for 15 times, they have been the all-star animal kingdom. And it's up there with the, they're up there with the, what's that? What was the name? Oh, the Michael Jordan Cougar. Yes, yes. How do you not know about the shadows? <laughs> okay, well, are they similar in accomplishment to the oh. LeBron bear? There would be no LeBron bear if the Shaq Moose hadn't dominated the animal kingdom first. Okay, so let me get this straight. Oh. The Shaq has oh. absolutely no oh. relevance to Australia, either oh. environmentally, oh. politically or culturally. Oh. And anyone under the age of 30 has no understanding of their significance. But they're so cool. Okay. Well, that's enough. Thank you so much, Bindi, for introducing us to the unrelated to Australian context animal. My pleasure. And as they say down under, Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. No. Oi, oi, <laughs> right, oi. now let's head over to the sports therapy couch where our patient continues to work through some issues. OMG, guess which of our favourite toxic couples is trending all over the socials? No, it's not Kim and Pete. Megan and Machine Gun Kelly? Nope, it's Guitar and FIFA, of course. You think they would have learnt after their past controversies? <clears throat> Brazil, <clears throat> Russia, <clears throat> human rights abusers? Anyway, they seem to be trying really hard to make it work, but it's starting to sound a lot like Firefest 2.0. I mean, they already went back on their pitch of indoor air-conditioned stadiums, delaying the tournament to November, but I guess human rights abuse, slavery, and the death of more than 6,000 people doesn't really get the job done any faster. Look, I'm going to be real with you. Considering the corrupt bidding allegations in 2015, that whole money laundering thing, it's a wonder they've managed to stick it out this long. Something just isn't adding up here. Sport is supposed to bring people together, except I guess in FIFA's case, we'll conveniently ignore members of the LGBT plus community, women, the poor, migrant workers, and people who drink alcohol in public. Sports washing at its finest. Insightful. Now, let's see what Theatrix, our very own Broadway baby, has in store for us this week. Oh my, Mr. Ex-President, how do you do it? Do what? Brainwash almost an entire country, break the law countless times, and still face absolutely no consequences. Well, it's super easy for a guy like me. I get up at the crack of dawn, <laughs> eat a Big Mac for breakfast, and most importantly, I'm very rich and very white. I own this country. I own every country. In fact, I even own you. <gasps> How delightful! I saw him there across the room. He was mysterious as a known de plume with this fake tan and hair like a toucan, a KKK fan, I assumed. I approached him with a tentative step, a man like that always has a rep. I asked, how did you make fascism so hip again? Nationalism really is my favorite trend. Stand back and stand by. Was his first response. There's nothing quite as charming as sexist nonchalance. Then he checked I wasn't Mexican or undocumented before he grabbed me by my purse and then he lamented. Pull back that mask of equality, 
and you'll find the real American dream, the best country to destroy the earth and force all the people to give birth. In God we trust, health care is obsolete, and by God, I really mean the corporate elite. Sweet land of boundless liberty, where even a president can lead misogyny. Though he's never made a woman come to hang out with all his neoliberal chums, he told me where those stolen documents are hid. They're in a box under his bed. Stashed with a small loan of a million dollars And the brains of all his desperate followers Make America great again, he says, shouldn't be embargoed You'll find it all at his resort in Mar-a-Lago Broadway baby coming to a theatre near you. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode. And with news, Daniel Ricardo is turning to Uber for employment, democracy is in disarray, and NASA's rockets are suffering from erectile dysfunction. The world seems pretty unpredictable of late. But don't fret. There's at least one thing for certain. Leonardo DiCaprio will leave you the second you turn 25. After four years of dating Camilla Marone, the now 47-year-old Leo called the Rello quits two months after the young actress turned 25. But I mean, at least she made it to 25. Among the 14 other models and actresses the Titanic star and pseudo-climate activist has dated, only three other women were able to make it to the ripe old age of 25 before the inevitable breakup. I guess I only have five more years to make Leonardo DiCaprio fall in love with me. Oh, the struggle. It's real.